Florida is under attack from invaders. When we hear the word invasive, the first thing that comes to mind is insects. Or reptiles. But there are invaders from the non-animal world that pose a serious threat to native Florida. This is the Florida Field Journal. Everywhere we look, there are luxurious grassy areas, berries on trees and bushes, and beautiful flowers. But some of them threaten our native plants and animals. To help sort it all out, I'm teaming up with my good friend and invasive plant filmmaker, Phil Chiocchio. Phil, thanks for helping me with this. My pleasure, Daryl. Uh, there's so many invasive plants beyond my, my ability to distinguish them, so I really have to rely on your expertise as being somebody who's chased these plants for a long time. Uh, how did you get started? Well, I've been a filmmaker all my life. Since uh, high school, I was a filmmaker, and I went to college, majored in film, and, uh, and I've always enjoyed environmental films. And I got the opportunity through the University of Florida in the middle 80s to do fisheries programs on spawning fish, that type of thing. And in the same building was the Center for Aquatic Plants. And I was hired by them with a grant from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to start making programs on what aquatic plants were in Florida. That's, uh, 4,000 lakes, a lot of rivers, a lot of streams, a lot of aquatic plants. And then the issue of the non-native invasive plants started to come up. In the aquatic world, it was the hydrillas, the uh, water hyacinths, and those types of plants that can seriously clog rivers and lakes and streams. And I began making a lot of identification programs trudging through the swamps. I had worked on National Geographic, Realm of the Alligator. My life has uh, been interesting, uh, not in a microscopic world, but in a uh, adventure, curiosity, film world in numerous locations around the state. And most recently, I've gotten away from aquatics and gone to upland non-native invasive plants, non-native Invasive is an invasive plant that can do harm, not necessarily a, a, a non-native plant that wouldn't harm anything. There's a lot of those, but there's a lot of non-native invasives that there are no natural enemies, no nothing to keep them at bay. So that, now that's become a very expensive operation for our communities to control these because when you start getting plants that are invasive like this, they can uh, kill other plants, they can kill the food supply. So I'm here across the street from a, a, a little park, a little city park, and this is just a typical corner. Everyone sees a corner where instead of lawn, they've allowed the vegetation to grow up. And we've got our palm tree or a native native tree look it up you can find out what that is but look what's happening a carrot wood is growing up and now the carrot wood is going to overtake this whole area and it'll snuff out these native trees and here's the carrot wood and you can start we can identify these I've had a lot of fun with this they spread by birds eating the seeds and then the uh, American crow We'll eat the seeds, spread it, and go off, off, fly around. But you can see they cut one here, and it's got a very carroty color on the inside. It eventually goes away, but very bright orange. But there's carrot wood above me, carrot wood spreading over here, spreading over here. It just keeps going over in here. 
I mean, it's just amazing. But then what I also end up seeing is asparagus fern. Oh, isn't that cute? I planted this. Somebody bought a piece at the store, planted that, and now it's all back in there. Goes back about 20 feet. Goes down here another 20 feet. Starting to climb up on this tree here. And what it's doing is eliminating food and habitat for all the birds that you see in your in your textbooks. Well, the textbook now says the birds don't like this. The insects don't like this. So the insects aren't here to feed the fish. And it goes, asparagus fern keeps going and going and going. So the issue is, do we want to have our native plants ruined because we're not taking any action to get rid of the non-native invasives? And carrotwood is a, certainly is a major problem. Huge trees, these will grow huge. And uh, there used to be a lot of them on the bayfront. The county planted them. And then they realized, wait a minute, that was a bad idea. They took them all out. But now they're, if you look around, you drive down the road, very distinct color and, uh, and leaf shape. So you can see here the oak tree, the native plant on the right, and the carrot wood on the left, the, the larger green leafy plant is a fairly young plant and yet it's overtaking the oak. And within a year or so, it will go over the oak tree. It'll shade out the oak tree's ability to continue growing and uh, eventually die off. So that means the mockingbirds, the blue jays, the cardinals won't have a habitat to uh, be living in any longer. The carrot wood does not offer much food for any of the wildlife. The scientific name for carrot wood is Cupaniopsis anacardioides. And the ecological threat, it invades uh, the spoil islands. You find it more along the coast, like we have in Sarasota County, and Manatee County, and Charlotte County. So along the, uh, the spoil islands that are out in the bay, along the shorelines and the houses, uh, the beach dunes in marshes into the hammocks, the tropical hammocks that we have around neighborhoods, in, even up into the pine land areas and the mangrove and cypress swamps. The scrub habitats and all the coastal stands, it greatly alters the understory habitat. And where we are here, the whole understory is now being overtaken by this one invasive area of this carrot wood is coming in and, and, and it'll wipe out the sea grape tree, it'll wipe out the uh, native palm trees, it'll wipe out the oak tree. And unless we as a society decide we want to keep the native plants, this thing will just keep continuing and uh, nothing will stop it. So as a filmmaker, when I'm photographing these plants for identification, I'm, I'm looking for alternate leaves. This is an alternate leaf up the stem. They're not, the leaves aren't straight across from each other. They're alternate up the stem. And they're stalked oblong. They're oblong on, on the shape. They're leathery and they're very shiny yellowish green. So you have to be able to identify the plant if you're going to go out and, and make the identification video. They're usually three inches, three inches wide or so, with the margins, the entire margin. The margin is, is right along in here. Some leaves have little styrations on them, some have smooth margins. So you have to, when you do the identification, you'll go in and do a very close up picture of that type of thing. The tips are rounded. Some leaf shapes are, are pointed, some are flat. These are rounded. So the nice thing about the carrot wood, as it stands out from a photographic point of view, is the colors come through it in the day 
as the daylight goes through, so the leaves shine at you when you're going by. I don't know if you can see the glistening on this particular leaf here when the sun shines on it. As you're driving down the road or you're in your school bus looking out the window, and watch these leaves and they'll, they'll glisten at you. And from, if, if it's the back, it'll have a different color green. So it's two shades of green. And if you follow it, if you're there long enough, follow where this plant is growing up into the, uh, uh, the stand of native vegetation that's there. So from uh, photography, from a, from a composition angle of, of identifying this, you want to be able to show the shape of the leaf, show the alternate leaves, show the color and, uh, and, and its habitat. So asparagus fern, the scientific name is Asparagus densiflorus. And the ecological threat is that it's found in large colonies. You can buy this at the nursery store. For some reason, they keep selling it. No, isn't this cute? But all of a sudden, it's spreading for yards into, uh, into the habitat and it displaces the native ground cover. As you can see in this area here, no flowers are coming up, nothing for the birds to eat, there's no fruit, there's nothing there except the asparagus fern. And this has little stickers on it. It's, it's a nasty little plant to get in. You don't want to be rolling around in that. But it displaces the, the ground cover and the understory shrubs. So it'll start to grow up into different shrubs and start to uh, cover them up. So if you've got a nice little hibiscus or some other plant that you put in there and you let your asparagus fern take over, next thing you know it goes in there and uh, it'll cover it up. It has escaped into the tropical hammocks in uh, Palm Beach County. It's now here in Sarasota County. So it's, it's a nasty, nasty type of plant. It's an evergreen and it's a perennial, which means it doesn't die off in the wintertime. It keeps coming back. And if we were to go in and dig this one up, you would see there's the tiny tubers in, underground. So once it starts, you've got real issues. But it is a beautiful plant. Like most plants in its own way, it is a beautiful plant and it's, um, but for here in Florida, not good. The flowers are small, white to pinkish, and very fragrant. I can see the spines there. Yeah, there's the, oh, there's one right there. There's one of the little stickers right there, but it's right by my finger. Can you see that? There, ow, oh, I just got poked. <laughs> ow! So the spines are right where the branchlets come off of the stem. There's like a, right in there. Can you see that? Right by where the flower came up. So at each of the points where the branch comes off, the leaves come off of the branch, is there a little, little spike. Dangerous out here. Very dangerous. So in the asparagus fern, this is the the fruit, and then they're bright red berries, uh, less than uh, one inch in diameter, about eight millimeters. And there's usually three seeds per fruit. So if I were to open this up, you might be able to see the seeds. And oh, there's one coming out there, a little black seed. And of course, we can grow a another one. So when you're doing the identification program, you would uh, uh, need to identify those. But it's fascinating just to be able to come out and see what's, see what's in your yard, even if it is a non-native invasive. Let me open up another one. There's, there's your seed and the fruit right there. So uh, we can come back here in a year and uh, this will be covering up that oak tree. Maybe somebody can find a use for this. So this is quite the spot right here. I got asparagus fern 
covering the understory, and look what I find here where we've been doing carwood. Here's a camphor tree, and camphor tree can grow up to 65 feet tall. So here's your camphor tree, and then here's your carrot wood growing up and above the lens, but it's going to both of these will now go over top of the oak tree and kill that. So the understory is going to die from the asparagus fern. The camphor tree is going to go up higher than the carrot wood, and the carrot wood is going to smother the oak tree. The camphor tree will take over. The way you can tell camphor tree is you, you crush it up, and it smells like camphor. And it's, it's, uh, it's great. Once you see this tree, bigger ones, they're all over the county. You, you go along the road roadways and you'll start seeing them and go, oh, there's a, car there's a camper tree, there's another camper tree. There, there's a lot of these out here and they just keep spreading and of course this one just popped up. Nobody planted this here. and But people did plant them for quite a few years and now it's a, a real problem. So if we came back here in a couple years, this would be 15 feet tall. The oak tree will start to be suffering. The birds will be gone. And uh, it'll be a pretty diluted area for wildlife. So one way to identify the camphor tree, Cinnamomum camphora, is that it's an evergreen. It grows to 65 feet. The twigs are green. You can see the stem is green in here. Uh, all the vegetative parts or what they call glabrous. Uh, the cut stem and bruised leaves giving off a strong aroma of camphor. And if you break this and smell it, that's what it'll smell like. The leaves are simple, but one of the things you can see about the margin here, it has a waviness to it. Can you, you see how this just waves? And now the nice thing for, from photography is one side is a very rich green, the other side is a very pale green. So sometimes one of the ways to identify it real quickly is to see the, the pale green on one and the dark green on the other. On the camphor tree, the bark is very gnarly and has lots of indentations and uh, really neat patterns from a photographic point of view or an artistic point of view. Very, very uh, beautiful for a non-native invasive plant. The ecological damage for this, it, it primarily you find it in a drier, disturbed area such as roadsides and fence rows, uh, but it has invaded natural areas such as the hammocks and the upland pine woods and scrublands, and people have them in their front yards as decorative trees. Yeah, these are all, these are all new ones, and that's a Brazilian pepper. They're popping up everywhere. They keep spreading as the branches keep moving out, more trees grow up from it. So uh, this, the camphor tree can now get very wide and tall and snuff out everything in its path. So these are the seeds that it drops? Right. These would be the seeds. These are a, a single droop, they call it. And uh, really beautiful how they, they set right on top of the base of it. But they're everywhere and they'll start growing right into the soil nearby and birds will pick it up and move it and the tree will just keep growing and growing and growing. So from a photography point of view, uh, it's, it's quite the specimen. And of course it smells good when you crush it up. Smell that. Yummy. Hmm. It probably smells better than we do out here in mm -hmm. this day. <laughs> this is a Malaluca tree. Malaluca can grow up to a hundred feet and it'll keep spreading and it gets thicker so that it, you can't even go through it. Down in the Everglades, it took over the north of Tamiami Trail in the Everglades and you can't go through, the deer can't go through there. It just gets totally thick, a hundred feet high. 
and it just keeps spreading. And if, if they hadn't been mowing here, this would just keep coming up and coming up. But what you see here is Brazilian pepper, another non-native invasive, but the Brazilian pepper is now thickening in there, wiping out every other plant. So really a fabulous uh, horror movie story of Malaluca and Brazilian pepper and Hollywood couldn't make a better movie here. This is the damsel in distress has been locked in here and uh, the Brazilian pepper is strangling her life away, but I will go in and rescue her. And uh, you too, as a plant detective, can have a great time. Look for these Malaluca trees on the horizon. They're, they're everywhere, they're 100 feet tall. There is a, a Malaluca weevil that's been released and is now taking, uh, taking hits on a lot of these plants. And I don't know if they're in this particular area or not. And what they found as far as chemically is they girdle these Malaluca trees. They'll girdle it with a machete all the way around and then spray it with Garlon, a uh, chemical uh, around it. And that kills the tree. But the tree reacts by sending off all its fruit. And you can see fruit on the ends of this twig up here. The fruit is a round, woody capsule about three millimeters or three-eighths of an inch wide in clusters surrounding young stems. Each capsule can hold 200 to 300 tiny seeds. The scientific name for Malaluca is Malaluca quinquinervia. When the tree senses that it's being distressed, it'll say, I don't like that, and whoosh, sends all its fruit out Thousands and thousands of seeds will go out to replant. So, uh, interesting book is The Botany of Desire, how plants can, uh, they can't think, but they can do something, and they keep going. So, uh, you can get Malaluca now as a mulch at some of the uh, farm stores, and they'll take the, they'll take and shred it up. You know, just it's just a, uh, nice little bark but they can take the whole tree and mulch it up it works as a great uh, way to do mulch instead of cypress which is a native tree that's having issues the brazilian pepper once you see this uh, taking over you'll see it everywhere especially along highways and fence rows in your neighborhood where nobody lives and nobody takes care of it the brazilian pepper has uh, just overgrown everything I don't know why it's not in more movies down here in Florida. It's just a, it's just a fabulous uh, invasive, non-native invasive. The scientific name of Brazilian pepper is Chinus terebinthifolius. It's an evergreen shrub or tree that can grow to 43 feet tall, often with multi-stem trunks and branching arches and crossing and forming tangled masses. You can't get through this. Once this grows, it's really hard to even go in there with a chainsaw and cut it out. The ecological thread, it just forms these dense thickets of tangled woody stems that completely shade out and displace native vegetation. It has displaced some populations of rare listed species and it produces certain agents which appear to suppress other plants' growth. It almost acts as a poison to other plants. And when you find this plant, you find many of them, rows and rows and long fence rows. It just doesn't stop. And I used to see it along I-75 until they went in and they cut it down. But it would go for 20 miles, just thick, and nothing, nothing wants to be in there. It's just take away the habitat and food of everything else. The fruit is a small, bright red spherical droop. They're very noticeable in the season. Uh, and you'll, see, you'll drive along and you'll look out and you'll see a green thicket with a bunch of red dots. That's your Brazilian pepper. Fruits are now starting. And these will turn bright red. The robins will come through and uh, and they have a certain intoxicant to them for robins. And uh, the 
Robbins will then get a little woozy. So look what we have. We have the triple play. Here's a carrot wood coming up out of the ground. Bigger, bigger, bigger. With a Brazilian pepper working its way over here. Underneath a Malaluca, which is towering over everything. I don't hear any birds. There's no, no insects to feed the fish right across the street. This is just a, a zone of death and invasion. And uh, here's, a, here's a native plant getting squashed in here. And these are tough plants, but now there's no sun getting into this palm. And uh, you can see the carrot wood is taking over. There's the carrot wood. Malaluca, Brazilian pepper, carrot wood. Triple play in a neighborhood near you. For me, this as a career, this has been wonderful. I've been able to be on boats and airboats, airplanes, helicopters, cars with no roof on them, shooting different kinds of footage in the swamps and the, uh, on the water. Uh, in the air and finding new and exciting things and who would have thought plants could be so exciting and for students in Sarasota County to explore that world and start becoming a plant detective would be wonderful and I certainly had a great career